Anything else uh, on this before we move to S140? Senator Bruce, do you want to kind of kick it off as the lead sponsor of the bill? Sure. Actually, um, the only sponsor. Um, you're all by yourself on this one. Yeah, proudly. proudly. Um, so this was a bill that started with discussions with Migrant Justice, um, who will testify in a minute. Um, they're a group that has been doing great work in terms of trying to improve conditions for our migrant workers. Um, just wanted to say, uh, going back to my first term in the Senate, I was on agriculture, and it seemed to me that there were two things um, as, as we got into it, uh, two things that were saving Vermont farms, and I would say they were uh, organic farming, um, which was paying a higher price uh, for the goods that the farmers had, and migrant workers um, who were all over the state and they were performing jobs that um, were very, very difficult to fill, but were dangerous in some cases. And um, they were isolated on farms. And so um, that was when we passed uh, driver's privilege cards and to allow them to move around and get healthcare and groceries. Um, but this is a different problem for these workers uh, in that sometimes, as the chair said, their documentation issues put them at risk of uh, arrest or detention or deportation. And um, what this bill says is, I, I hesitate to call it simple because there are um, complicated interrelations between federal and state law, but what it attempts to do is prevent um, someone from being arrested when they go to a courthouse in good faith as a party to a proceeding or a witness uh, or, or someone who is there um, to support our judicial system, but that opportunity is used instead to arrest them and perhaps um, jail them or send them out of the state. So what this does is it, it provides a series of tools to allow them to uh, be free of that fear of arrest. But if someone violates and, and does arrest or detain them, it gives them options and it gives the Attorney General of Vermont options for how to deal with that. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to Eric who drafted and thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Eric, if you wanna walk us through this, it's a short bill. Yeah, I actually had walked the committee through it already last week. Oh, so, that's right. Uh, you you, you, you uh, did. I'm sorry. That's yeah. okay. Happy happy to <clears throat> refresh your recollection. I don't have anything to add to what Senator Peruth said or what my walkthrough was last week. It's a, it's a, uh, you may recall we had an interesting discussion last week about how this bill yep. uh, is based on uh, common law privilege against civil arrest that's been around uh, since the 16th century. It uh, uh, grew out of English common law, was incorporated into uh, uh, the common law of the United States at independence. There's an interesting uh, opinion from the Southern District of New York that I had uh, Peggy uh, helpfully posted on the website if the committee wants to learn any more about that interesting history, but it's based on that as well as a, a New York statute that passed already doing something very similar. Uh, I reworked the language, obviously, but uh, the concept is exactly the same. And that's as Senator Baruth described, which is that it creates, uh, or you know, in some ways, one might say, uh, uh, puts in statute this common law privilege, this privilege against civil arrest. And it's important to remember that it's civil arrest. It's only a, an arrest for purposes of someone's uh, uh, appearance at a civil proceeding. It doesn't have anything to do with a criminal proceeding. It's not to do with... And none of that would be affected by this bill, the ability of the state or a law enforcement agency to, to arrest somebody because of a criminal matter is not something that's addressed in this bill. It's only to do with an arrest for purposes of civil proceedings. And one of the main uh, civil proceedings in which that could occur these days, uh, used to be different long ago, but these days is an immigration proceeding. Immigration proceedings are civil in nature. And uh, I think the committee also got some materials I sent around that indicated that these arrests had happened over the last couple of years, uh, sometimes at Vermont courthouses. And I think that 
idea of the bill is to create a prohibition on that practice, provided that it, so if someone or a person's uh, either themselves or their family or household member is attending a court proceeding as a juror, witness, etc., uh, then they cannot be arrested there at the courthouse uh, while they're coming and going, essentially, uh, from that court proceeding. And the, the enforcement mechanism, so to speak, is that if someone does violate that and arrest them in that situation, they could be held in civil contempt as well as be the subject of a lawsuit for damages. So a person who was arrested in violation of the statutory prohibition, if it passed, uh, would be able to sue that the person who arrested them uh, for monetary damages in the civil division. Uh, so that's it essentially in a nutshell and um, uh, happy to answer any questions or uh, whatever else the committee might find helpful at this point. Yeah, thank you. Senator Benning. Eric, I'm reading um, 3701A prohibition. And I understand the intent of the person who is a party, a juror, attorney, or witness. Am I reading this wrong, though, that if their brother or their household member of whatever relation is attending and is not a party, juror, attorney, or witness, is also extended this um, umbrella, if you will? Uh, I read it as the, that person would also have to be, uh, oh, I see what you mean, any person or family member of the person. My first reading of it was uh, that the household member or family member uh, would also be a party juror or attorney, but you might be right. It might be the language needs to be tightened up there depending on what the intent is. Uh, my, my assumption is that the intent is to try to protect an individual who is participating in a court proceeding, not simply observing one. And as I read that, I thought, you know, that doesn't quite fit, at least the way I'm reading it. I, um, I, I, if I can just jump in, I read it as once it gets to who is attending a court proceeding in good faith as a party juror, attorney, or witness. So everything that comes before who, it seems to me, is controlled by the fact that they have to be a party, a witness, et cetera. So I, I take Joe's point that there might be confusion in reading it, but it seems to me as though I, I read it the way Eric reads it, which is that the only people who are going to be roped in are people who ultimately are in that category of party, juror, attorney, or witness. Uh, Philip, I'm not the English major here, but when you say or family or household member of the person, yep. you, you are muddying the water. If your intent is yeah. that any person who is a party, juror, attorney, or witness, you should just say that and not have the phrase family or household member of the person because that's very easily, um, as a defense attorney, I would use that language to say, hey, you can't bust this person. Yeah, and, and even and though never, they're not a party in the proceeding. Yeah, well, never, but, never hurts to clarify. Well, let me ask, is, since this was taken from the New York law, Eric, is this the way New York has done it? Uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head, Senator Sears. Let me just uh, look that up and I'll... Now, why don't we look that up and hear from the witnesses? Because I can think of some good reasons why you may want to include that. Supposing that it's a child, a minor, and the parent brings them, they're not a subject. Obviously, the child wouldn't be a juror, but could be a witness or whatever that we've just heard about and has been harmed by someone. And they're a witness to that. And they were at court should you be able to arrest the mother who brought them? So I, I, that's how it's I would policy, see it. It's a policy decision, but I want to make sure I understand yeah. what the policy is. No, I understood. I, I appreciate you raising it, but I, I think I could read it differently too, though, in the way I just explained. Um, 
if I might. So I actually um, will look into that, but I think it'd be good to, to move on to some witnesses. Um, our first one, um, I think Will Lambeck, who's uh, been here before and welcome back. Will, nice to see you. I think you have a couple of witnesses you want to introduce. Yeah, and if you have some, say you're, you're not on the agenda, but I know you're um, here in your role of, with Migrant Justice. So if you want to introduce yourself and any of the other witnesses, feel free to do so. Yeah, thank you very much, Senator Seert. <clears throat> uh, my name is Will Lambeck uh, with the organization Migrant Justice. Um, and I'm going to be introducing uh, Olga, who is a, a member and leader in the organization. Uh, she'll provide some testimony, and then uh, uh, I'll be interpreting that testimony from Spanish to English, and then I'll follow up with some comments of my own, if it pleases the committee. Um, so, uh, Olga, ¿estás ahí? Sí, aquí estoy. Ok, cuando te sientes lista. Hola a todos, mi nombre es Olga Cruz. Uh, soy una trabajadora en una granja de vacas y... También soy una líder de la organización Justicia Migrante. Hi everyone, my name is Olga Cruz. I'm a dairy worker and also a leader in the organization Migrant Justice. Creo que ya todos sabemos el motivo por el que estamos aquí ahora y pues uno lo que me motiva a estar aquí a mí es la lucha todavía por nuestros derechos, que nuestros derechos sean respetados de una u otra manera. Um, so I think you all know why we're here today, uh, the, the bill that we're here to discuss. Uh, and, and I was motivated to come here because I see this as part of a uh, uh, fight for my rights to be respected in one way or another. Eh, primero que nada, este, pues a nosotros, bueno, a nuestra comunidad migrante nos preocupa pues la situación de un poco de ir a las cortes este, por el mismo temor de ser arrestado. Ni siquiera uno piensa quizás a lo que vaya a decir el juez allá adentro, es más el temor que haya de que pues la migra esté afuera esperando. Um, so I want to say that our immigrant community is afraid of going to courts in this state because of the fear of being arrested. Uh, in fact, when you have to go to court, you aren't even thinking about what the judge might say to you or what might happen inside the courthouse. All you're thinking about is if an immigration agent is going to arrest you when you leave. Lo que estamos pidiendo como comunidad es que se prohíba estos arrestos. Porque eso, si eso sigue pasando, hace que la comunidad es más probable que no vaya a las cortes, así sea acusados por algún caso criminal o casos familiares, demandas legales o por alguna detención que haya pasado antes. And so what we're asking as a community is for these detentions to be prohibited uh, because the more that this happens, the more probable it is that members of my community uh, won't attend court proceedings, uh, whether that's a criminal case, a family case, a civil litigation, or if somebody uh, is, is in detention. Esta ley para nosotros es muy necesario y es un poco distinta a las políticas de no polimigra. No se trata de la colaboración de la policía con la migración, que claro es importante también, sino de limitar las acciones de la migración. Uh, and so this law for us is very necessary, uh, and, and it's also different from uh, previous actions uh, and policies in place like the fair and impartial policing policy. Uh, this law isn't about the collaboration between uh, local police with immigration per se, uh, but uh, although that's also a very important issue that needs to be addressed, uh, but this bill focuses on uh, limiting the instances in which uh, federal immigration can arrest people in Vermont. Estoy aquí también porque también tengo familiares, conocidos o amigos. Y para mí es muy importante que tomen en cuenta lo que se está pidiendo, porque de por sí a veces que 
se quiere cumplir, ir a las cortes por algo que haya pasado en la vida de cada persona aquí, pero es difícil ir o no ir y en alguna parte estaríamos fallando otra vez pero pues no nos da esa seguridad que uno va a regresar y algunos tienen familias y si uno les detienen en la corte, ¿qué pasa con la familia aquí? ¿Qué pasa con los hijos aquí? Uh, and so, uh, I'm here testifying today, uh, not only for myself, but because I have family members and acquaintances and friends who this affects as well. Um, because many things can happen in life that could bring you to uh, a courthouse and then you're faced with a difficult decision of uh, do I go to court um, and, and fulfill my responsibility uh, or do I not go uh, and not comply with that responsibility? And many people will choose um, uh, not to go out of fear of detention and deportation, uh, because that means being separated from your family, being separated from your children and your community. Es importante pensar que este, pues en qué hacer bien el trabajo que ellos están haciendo, pero este, también importante pensar en nuestra vida, de que no es fácil pues cuando llega pues una detención, eso conlleva muchas cosas y, y es difícil para nosotros, es difícil este, como, como tratar de hacer pues lo correcto por lo mismo de que pues uno nunca sabe lo que vaya a pasar y, y pues esperemos que tomen en cuenta lo que se está pidiendo porque es muy importante para nuestra comunidad. Um, so this is an important issue. Uh, we hope that you think uh, carefully about this because it affects our lives. Uh, it's not easy when somebody is detained by immigration and it's difficult uh, to, to want to do what's right uh, by going to a, a, court, a, peer, a court hearing, but without knowing the consequences of that action. Um, and so I hope you take this into account because I think this is a very important issue for myself and my community. Muchas gracias por darnos este tiempo de, de participar aquí y porque nuestras voces sigan siendo escuchadas. Mi nombre es Olga y muchas gracias. So thank you again for giving us the time to participate here with you today and to hear our voices. Again, my name is Olga and thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Olga. Uh, eh, excelente. Y ahora pues voy a decir algunas palabras también. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you very much to Olga. Um, uh, I have some, uh, some testimony to add, but I, I can take a break if uh, anybody has questions for Olga first. Has this happened to any of her family or, um, eh, Olga, or friends? Olga, do you know this has happened to a person that you know, familiares or members of your family? Sí, ya conozco a un amigo. De hecho, él iba a estar hoy presente, pero por alguna emergencia familiar no estuvo. Pero pues ya le tocará hablar a él, dar su testimonio. Si sí, conocemos personas, esto es lo que está estado pasando. Amigos, conocidos, eso pasa siempre. Um, so Olga says, I do know people, uh, a friend of mine um, who this happened to. In fact, he was going to be here this morning to testify, uh, but he had a family emergency. And hopefully he can testify in the future uh, because this has been happening. It's happened to friends and acquaintances and is something frequent. Um, well, I, and maybe Olga wouldn't know, but in 2017, I think you were involved in this. Um, we passed um, what I think was Act 5, um, and it was designed to prevent cooperation between ICE and local law enforcement. Do you know if that has been followed up on? Have there been violations of that uh, statute? If I remember correctly, Governor Scott um, it followed uh, Trump's initial efforts and Governor Scott, Attorney General Donovan, pushed this strongly as the, the I think it was the first bill this committee did that year. Yeah, th thank you, Senator Sears, for the question. Uh, Olga, había una pregunta que voy a responder yo. Um, 
so yeah, um, uh, you, you're correct. At Act Five or at S seventy nine, and and I believe you were the principal sponsor on it in the Senate. Um, this was uh, this was a a law that was passed in twenty seventeen, um, which did two things principally. Uh, one, it attempted to preempt uh, threats uh, that were happening at the time around the creation of a, a Muslim registry um, and, and prevented Vermont from uh, creating registries or sharing information based on people's religion or uh, ideolo uh, ideology, things like that. Uh, and then more germane to, to this question, it also limited the ability for Vermont law enforcement agencies to sign formal collaboration agreements with federal immigration authorities. And the, the real target of that was a, a uh, an immigration agreement called 287G, uh, which uh, refers to the federal statute, which allows ICE and Border Patrol to basically deputize local law enforcement agencies to perform immigration detentions. Um, and it will re require that the governor would have to sign uh, off on uh, uh, on those agreements before they could take effect. Um, so that, that law was passed uh, and put into place. Um, uh, and and has has been been followed to my knowledge. There there are no 287G agreements in Vermont, um, and um, uh, this is a, a, a distinct issue um, in the the realm of sort of uh, how Vermont relates to immigration enforcement. Uh, there's also the related uh, question of Vermont's fair and impartial policing policies. Your committee has looked at this issue of FIPs uh, uh, over the years. Uh, and there, there are significant uh, problems and loopholes with the enactment and implementation of those policies in law enforcement agencies around the state. Uh, but this is a distinct issue. As Olga said, it's, it's not necessarily about the, um, the actions of Vermont law enforcement, uh, but uh, provides protection around courts from federal immigration enforcement. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Any comments you want to make about the bill will kind of yeah thank you very much y Olga ahora pues voy a dar uh, algún uh, testimonio también eh, entonces te puede quedar o si ya ya eh, tiene que ir está bien también eh, muchas gracias sí voy a estar hasta las 10 gracias oh, okay excelente um, so yeah uh, th thank you to the committee uh, thank you Senator Baruth for introducing this bill um, uh, Migrant Justice is a, a Vermont based human rights organization founded and led by immigrant farm workers like Olga um, and um, so I, I do want to start off by saying that uh, these ICE arrests um, in Vermont courthouses are a reality in Vermont. Uh, this is something that does happen in the state. Uh, migrant justice staff members have directly witnessed immigrant farm workers detained by ICE uh, at Vermont courthouses. Uh, I personally have received uh, multiple calls from people as they're being detained uh, during and after court appearances. And this happens in multiple courthouses around the state. It's not limited to one specific courthouse. Um, and in each of these cases, and as the bill addresses, these are civil detentions uh, being carried out by ICE. They're not criminal cases. They aren't being, um, uh, there, there's no uh, execution of a warrant in these cases. They're all civil detentions solely for the purpose of uh, uh, deportation. Uh, this is something that affects uh, criminal defendants also litigants in uh, family and civil cases, uh, and, and all court users. Um, and uh, one instance um, uh, in uh, an Addison County courthouse, and, and this I think goes a bit to uh, Senator Benning's uh, question from before, um, but there had been a case where an immigrant farm worker was detained on a criminal charge, and he was being uh, brought in front of a judge for a bond hearing. Uh, the, the attorney uh, asked, the defendant's brother to be present um, as, as a show that the defendant had community ties, um, that, that the judge could release him on bond, and he had a family member there um, who, who would vouch for him. Um, I uh, accompanied the brother uh, of the defendant uh, to the Addison County Courthouse uh, at the request of the attorney, and, and when I uh, entered into the courtroom, I saw um, uh, the uh, director of Vermont's uh, ICE office sitting in the courthouse. Uh, I advised the brother, the defendant, uh, who, who promptly left the courthouse uh, due to the presence of ICE, um, and the court hearing went forward without the family member of the defendant present. Um, so here's a, a clear instance of, of a community member in Vermont uh, being denied due process, essentially, uh, in the Vermont court system uh, because of the intimidation of a federal agency 
uh, uh, acting on civil matters. Uh, so this bill, by, by prohibiting uh, those detentions, would strengthen due process and, and in turn strengthen the integrity of the Vermont judicial system. Um, and so um, this is a, a needed protection for, for a documented problem in the state. Uh, it also has wide support from a variety of stakeholders. Um, they aren't on the agenda to speak today, uh, but um, you will be hearing in the future from the Attorney General's office, from the Office of the Defender General, uh, both of whom I've been informed uh, do support this bill. Uh, I believe the Attorney General's office will be recommending a, a slight amendment to clarify their enforcement powers in the bill. Uh, we, we support that amendment and, and believe it, uh, it just clarifies and strengthens the intent of the bill. Um, and so with the, the support, um, uh, we hope for speedy passage. Uh, you'll be hearing from uh, more voices in support uh, um, directly following this testimony. And then if you do reconvene, um, uh, Olga had mentioned um, uh, a, a gentleman who was uh, detained by ICE at his court appearance. He was scheduled to testify today wasn't able to join us, uh, but I hope that uh, he may be able to if there are future hearings so you can hear directly from him. Uh, so thank you very much, um, and I'll end my testimony there. I, I do plan to hold a future hearing next week, um, but uh, day and time to be <laughs> announced. So yeah, we'd, we'd be happy to hear from other folks. Um, I appreciate your testimony, Will. Are there any questions for Will? I think it's fairly clear. Um, Peggy will be in touch with a future date and hopefully we can hear from um, some of those other folks that you just mentioned. Um, Senator White. So I, I fully support this, but I, I'm just curious, do, and in the other states where this is done, do we have the ability to um, control ISIS I, I guess, is it enforceable? I, I'm fully in support, but I just want to make sure that we make sure that it is enforceable. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, and and there, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that the specifics of the question to, to the lawyers who are going to be speaking okay. next. Um, but uh, as you heard uh, from Eric, this is based on the Protect Our Courts Act from New York, uh, which was carefully studied and, and debated, has been uh, in practice uh, or implemented for over a year now. Um, and and uh, it, it's certainly our belief that this is fully enforceable. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Other questions for Will? Will, thank you. We'll see you next week. Um, our next, wit wit excuse me. next witness is Amanda Garcia from the Human Rights Commission. Amanda, welcome. Oh, thank you so much uh, for having me here. Um, Chair Sears and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Amanda Garces. I am the Director of Policy, Education and Outreach for the Vermont Human Rights Commission. I wanna thank Sarah, Senator Buru for bringing this uh, forward. Um, the mission of the Vermont Human Rights Commission is to promote full civil and human rights in Vermont. The commission enforces the laws over which we, it has jurisdiction through investigation, conciliations, and litigation, as well as prohibiting, as well as providing education and training. It develops and advances policies and legislations related to the protection of the most vulnerable Vermonters. By its enab enabling statute, the Human Rights Commission enforces anti-discrimination and civil rights laws. These statutes prohibit individuals or entities from taking adverse action or discriminated against individuals in protected categories. In this case, an a national origin discrimination case may be brought to us when access to courts is prevented. What this bill does is strengthen, is strengthen people's access to justice. It creates a clear path for relief. Uh, we believe the Human Rights Commission should not be the only process for people that would like to have some sort of relief. Um, so again, it just creates a very clear path. Um, Vermont has seen a fair share of injustices towards our immigrant community from the settlement of a discrimination lawsuit against uh, the Vermont DMV to the stories that migrant justice brought here today and the stories we may, might never hear. Um, with this law in place, our immigrant community will be able to seek justice without fear 
or pre present themselves to take responsibility. Whether a person is a party on a case or a witness, many organizations who work with immigrant communities work hard to educate them about their responsibilities to present themselves in judicial proceedings. But the fear has always been an obstacle. And this fear was uh, exacerbated by the past administration nationwide. These types of arrests are work against due process. Uh, and this bill affirms the need to access to that due process without obstacles. In Vermont, we must offer our immigrant community access to court to a court system, access without fear, regardless of people, Im people's immigration status. And the HRC fully supports this bill as is. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very clear. Amanda, just so you're aware, Senator Benning used to be the, well, used to, was the chair of the Human Rights Commission yeah. back a few years ago. So um, we get every now and then updates uh, on the Human yeah. Rights Commission. And he's, um, so Senator Benning, um, don't know if you've met him. No, I have not. Nice to meet you, Senator. Good morning, you as well. Good morning, thanks. Thank you, other questions for Amanda? Thanks so much, Amanda. We appreciate the support. Um, Thank you. Uh, Falco Schilling is here from the ACLU. Um, I'm assuming in support of the bill. That's correct. Good morning. Um, my name is Falco Schilling. I'm the advocacy director for the ACLU of Vermont. And I think this is actually the, the first time I've had the privilege of coming in front of the committee this session, though I've had the, the privilege to be in front of you many times before. Um, I'm actually just coming off of leave. My wife and I just had a new baby. So if I am a bit scatterbrained, it might be due to the lack of sleep, um, but doing my best to come in in support of this bill today. And thank you for the opportunity to testify. Before you start your testimony, congratulations. Thank you so much. So the ACLU of Vermont supports S-140 because it creates a more accessible legal system for all the residents of Vermont. As an organization that works to protect people's civil liberties, we recognize a key component of that is access to the courts. Um, one thing that we have heard already in the testimony today and that I'm gonna highlight in some of my testimony is the chilling effect that having um, civil arrests at courthouses can have on access to justice and also cooperation with law enforcement and just the operation of courts in general. Um, the ACLU, in collaboration with prosecutors, law enforcement officers, and legal advocates across the country, in 2017 conducted a national, nationwide survey uh, to see what the impacts of increased enforcement uh, from the Trump administration um, had on access to justice and the operations of the courts. So looking at the change between 2016 and 2017, where we saw a 30% increase in overall arrests, um, uh, in enforcement actions and also courthouse arrests uh, in particular. Um, anecdotally over in New York State from 2016 to 2017, we saw a 1200% increase in those arrests in courthouses. So as you've heard from folks earlier, this does have a chilling effect on people's ability and willingness to both work with law enforcement and to uh, engage in court proceedings. Um, this uh, report, which I'm happy to share with the committee, I'm sorry I didn't share it ahead of time, um, is called Freezing Out Justice. So it, it does look at the period between 2016 and 2017 when we saw this increase in enforcement and what chilling effect that did have on access to justice and willingness of immigrant communities to work with courts. So some of the key findings um, from that report were that approximately 20% of law enforcement officers surveyed that found from 2016 to 2017, immigrant crime survivors were less likely to help investigators when police arrived at the scene of a crime, to help post-crime scene investigations, or to work with uh, prosecutors compared to the previous year. 82% of prosecutors said that compared to the previous year, Domestic violence cases were underrepresented or harder to prosecute. 70% reported the same for sexual assault. 55 found the same for difficulties, uh, same difficulties for human trafficking cases. And 48% said they had similar underrepresentation for child abuse cases. Um, advocates uh, for immigrant communities said that they are, uh, they, the legal service reported a 40% decrease in the number of cases filed on behalf of immigrant crime survivors. And this creates an overall decrease in public safety when we have people who are 
either unwilling to cooperate with authorities both to report or be witnesses um, when a crime has occurred or to try and uh, report the crimes to protect themselves or family members. Um, I also appreciate the testimony and the discussion earlier on the clarification about who this bill would encompass. Um, and I think uh, you heard many, some good arguments for why this is important to both encompass uh, the people who are directly in the proceedings, as well as those family members who might be accompanying them. Um, as discussed earlier, there's, there's both transportation issues and there's many other legitimate reasons why a family member might be um, necessary to accompany someone into a court proceeding. Um, and that by denying them or, you know, uh, by making them have a reasonable fear of detention, they might not participate and that could help, uh, that might reduce some of the due process guarantees that folks uh, could hope to enjoy. So uh, keeping it pretty short, because I know that you've been going through a lot and you've heard some really good testimony, you'll probably hear more on this, but the ACLU of uh, Vermont supports this bill and appreciate the committee uh, bringing this forward and having this discussion. Thank you. Any questions for Falco? Falco, thank you very much. Appreciate your testimony. It's pretty clear. Um, our next witness is, uh, oh God, grabbed the wrong agenda. Uh, Susanna Davis, um, is she not here yet? I guess not. Peggy, do you know? Um... She's supposed to be here. I can reach out to her again. Um... Would you please? Sure. We're actually going a little quicker than I expected. Senator Sears, can I just ask a question um, of you? Sure. Um, if we're lining up witnesses next time around, this bill is actually going to create liability for ICE members. I'm wondering if we're going to hear any witnesses from that camp. Excuse me. I... It appears you have frozen. There's a pun in there somewhere between ice and being frozen. There you are. Um, I'm just curious, since this bill would exact a, a penalty on ICE members who attempt to effect an arrest, uh, I'm just wondering if we're gonna hear any witnesses from that side of the equation. We certainly could if they're interested. Um... Can you check on that, Peggy or Eric? I don't even know where to begin. Uh, be the federal prosecutor's office, I suppose. I would think. Thank you. Yeah, I would. I would think that uh, you would, if you were looking to hear some perspective from from that side. I would think your first stop would be the U.S. Attorney's office. Yeah, usually they refuse to testify, by the way. Um, I just heard from Susanna. She said she's still in House Commerce, hoping to join soon. Um, well, <laughs> we have a break scheduled at 1015. Um, can we take it early and see if we can, if she can get back to us by... Um, if not, we can schedule our next week and we'll take our break, um, at 10, 15, till 10, 15. And, um, yeah, why don't we take our break and then pick up at 10 30 with, uh, no knock warrants, unless there's somebody else on the screen who would like to comment further about this bill. All right, Peggy, so why don't we ask her if she... Come back if at 10.30, Nick? No, 10.15. 10 10.15. 10 yeah, if we come back at 10.15, hopefully 
she'll be able to testify. If not, hopefully some of the folks, um, <clears throat> well, we know Eric is already here anyway, could walk us through S228. Um, <clears throat> and then we can hear from other witnesses. Yep. I'll let them know we're starting a few minutes early on to, although I well, think we don't know yet. Susanna, if, yeah. If Susanna's here, we're going to hear from her at 10 yep. 15. Yep. 